Hi guys, Rich from Out of Smart, welcome back to another YouTube video. So, as you can probably tell by where I am and what I'm doing, this is going to be another walkthrough video. In fact, on the night that this was filmed, we got many rap walkthrough videos to do back to back to back because we're currently on the Christmas rush. Uh, a lot of these are going to site um, now or some of them are going to site early in January. So let me tell you a little bit about this project. So we've actually already done the client's brother's house. So when we've done the client's brother's house, uh, we've done that, handed it all over. Um, beautiful manor house in North Wales. Then his brother got a new house and he went around to his house and he said, oh, what speakers and tech are you putting in? I've not even thought about speakers in tech. Bearing in mind they're closing all the walls up. And he said, oh, we should put speakers in tech and speak to Art of Smart. So he reached out, spoke to us, and lo and behold, jumped on the job, got speakers and tech in. And we'll talk you through what speakers and tech we got in very shortly. So we actually used one of our AOS partners for this, Dom at DLS Electrical, who jumped on the job very quick. i um, done the project, came up here and built the rack with us. So he built all the rack. We've had it here on soak test and been finishing the programming and commissioning. I am. Um, Let's take you through it. So when we actually do these racks, Art Smart Design will do some drawings for them. So that particular one there was the layout drawing. Um, while the racks are in here, and before they actually go out to site, we then got another clipboard. Uh, and this has a rack checklist and walkthrough. As you can see, a lot of this is completed, a lot of it isn't completed. Um, and our racks will actually go through a checklist, uh, pre-flight test, if you like. We'll test everything, we'll test the outputs. Anyway, I'll stop waffling. Let's get onto the rack. So this rack we've actually got here is a rack from our friends at Penelcom. Um, so we've got the Penelcom rack on here, uh, and we'll take you through the components. So if we're coming down here, we've got a Control 4 Core 5 controller. Now this is actually the new series of processors from Control 4. Um, this is the, the Core 5, so it's the new generation from the EA series processors. It's got more audio outputs, um, a much faster, better controller. The CA10 still sits at the top of the tree. However, the, the Core 5 controller is what we've used for this project because of the size, but more importantly for the audio streams. So different size processors will give you different audio streams. Uh, and this actually gives us six. So three analog and three digital. The main premise of this job here is audio video really and network and security is what we're doing for this project. So then coming down then, we've obviously got the Art Smart Rack Strip, which as it goes for its pre-flight test, we'll then get the site ID, the asset ID, which already stuck on here for this rack. And then we've also gonna have the support details on there in case they ever needed to contact support. Coming down then, we've actually got a package SX series switch. Uh, the reason we use package on this job, obviously we use a rack list moreover these days, is because we actually have package in the cl in the client's brother's house, uh, and it's just so that they've got the same on there. If we use a different brand, they would be like, oh, why has he got this, and why have I got this? So put them both the same, keep them both happy. Um, we've then got a blank here, so we obviously leave the blanks in the racks for a bit of cooling and ventilation, but you know, it helps the rack maintain what's called the chimney effect, where cool air will come in the bottom, warm air will come in the top. Uh, however, we obviously always recommend that you have the rack locations with a bit of AC or at least some sort of ventilation. Going down then, we've got the Heat Vision NVR. So there's about 12 CCTV cameras going in on this project, so we have the NVR for that on there. There isn't actually, when I come and take you through the back after, there isn't actually any cables coming through here because what we've then got in the termination box, we've then got a front part network switch where all our CCTV cameras are gonna loop through there. Coming down then, another blank, and then we've got an A10 PDU. Obviously, we used to use the package PDUs. Now, Snap One purchased Control 4. Snap One already had a line called Whatbox, uh, and obviously had a rack list, which is why then package package was then discontinued um, so the what box wasn't actually available in the UK when we did this project uh, so we moved on to the A10 but effectively and to be honest I actually really like the A10 PDUs because they have buttons on the front so they don't have the screen to control the outlets they've got a press and hold on the bottom or press and hold for eight seconds on the end to reboot the entire PDU again another blank we then got an M Hub S video distribution system so we have actually been using the M Hub S quite a lot recently um, the reason we use using MLS is because of the way that it can stack. So we could do say an eight or even, yeah, we could do an eight by eight, but then later down the line, we could bolt another MLS on and make it an eight by 16. Um, so that's really interesting there. Then we've got another blank. We then got the client saw shelves. So these saw shelves, I'll show you that one, it's got some bits on, are prepped with the HDMI leads for the kit. So we've got a couple of HDMIs in on there. And then tucked away at the back is a couple of 
Uh, this cables, so the data cables were connected into this network switch, uh, and that's for that. Going past this here, then to the audio matrix, and we've got a triad 16 by 16 audio matrix switch. So, what that's gonna do, it's gonna take the six audio streams from the processor, it's then gonna bring them down here into the audio matrix switch and switch it out to the amps. Now, this project actually has four, eight, 12, 16 zones of audio going into the house. And to go on top of them 16 zones of audio, we actually have an output from this rack, which is gonna to go to a cinema room. Uh, and that's gonna be in a slightly later phase. And that's gonna have its own local rack, uh, rack its own local AVR. Um, so there'll be an extra zone added in there technically. Um, so yeah, the amps we're using on here are the Triad PAMP 4100s, uh, or the 4-zone power amplifiers, 4-zone um, 8 channels, uh, doing the audio on here. We then have some space here. We've got four user blanks where we can add extra kit in. Uh, we tend to use the one use over the two U blanks because if we ever change on a bit of kit, we could just slide it in without having to worry about a blank. And then last but not least, probably one of the most important parts on the rack is the UPS. So the battery backup system. So the rack's gonna sustain itself for a minimum of 30 minutes and that's gonna keep stuff online. Now, if the, rack, if the UPS run out, that is not a problem. The rack would reboot, the uh, power strip would do its boot sequence and the rack would come on properly. That's everything from the front of rack. However, all racks look good from the front. I tell you where they look better from the back. Let me spin around. So I told you the racks always look best from the back. Obviously, you've got all the cables and the rainbow spaghetti dressed in here. Now, I'll say this every video. I'm probably gonna say it on the next two videos too. But the reason we use the color coded system is because of fault finding diagnostics when I'm looking at rack. I could come in straight in here. I know the blue cables here, the video distribution, the whites are the HDMIs, black are all power cables, the green cable there is my uplink to the rack, the pinks are the speaker wires, the reds are all data cables, and yeah, more purple speaker wires there. So it then makes that rack really easy to identify, really easy to ID components. Now if it's a smaller rack and have more services in, or the CCTV cameras are wide straight in here, I'll be able to find those using the other cables, but because we're doing the front port switch termination box method, uh, that'll all get taken care of in there, which actually reduces the rainbow spaghetti in the rack. So looking through the kit then from the top, uh, again, we've got the Core 5 up there. We've then got the network switch and the CCTV MBR power distribution unit. And you'll notice these bars that I've got throughout the rack. These are called lacing bars. So the lacing bars are actually used to carry the cables um, along the lengths here. So it's not all saggy and drop down in the middle. We've then got the saw shelves. And then when we actually do on the saw shelves, is we've got the, the power strips, four gang power strips. So when the client sources arrive, we can just plug them in on there and they connect in. So these, same as everything within the rack is all labeled. So I've then got PDU1, output one seven, which is coming from here, output seven, that will come down onto there and it's all tied through, carried through. So on the drawings here, as you can see, we've got the Core 5 controller, the Arachne switch, the Heat Vision MVR, Source Shelf 1, Source Shelf 2, Source Shelf 3, the MOBS, and then the Audio Matrix. So those power connections are all lined through on there uh, and all matched through with what's on here. So I mentioned the audio streams. Now they're coming out the core processor and they're coming down the cable tray at the side of the rack with me, down to the bottom here where you can quite clearly see we've got all the audio connections going on. So those are coming into the audio matrix switch. And then the outputs from there are coming into these amps, the three amps, um, and then further down the bottom, we've got our main PDU, which is PDU zero. And basically what that's doing is that's providing power to the amps. Uh, and then we've got the UPS at the bottom, which is providing the feed in. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, seeing some of the cool tech which is going into this house in North Wales. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like and subscribe buttons below uh, so we continue to grow the channel. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to get in the comments. If you get in the comments and ask any questions, we'll do our best to get back to everybody and answer those. If we think the question that other people are gonna benefit from, we may even do a whole new uh, answering your questions video and reply to those comments there. Now, if you're a client or you're building a house or doing a house and you're interested in something like this in your house, to distribute all your tech and AV throughout the house. Keep it all in the cupboard so it's not all underneath your TVs and stacks of kit in the room and lots of remotes. Head over to our website, find the contact form or email hello at aos-group.co.uk and we'll be back in contact quickly. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.